Hey, it's Dr. Amanda with Street Smile Solutions, streetsmilesolutions.com, and today we're going to be talking about putting on bonded retainers. And you should watch all my other videos on bonded retainers, the why, the liability. We're not even going to go into any of that, different types, custom, in-house, whatever. Um, should you place them? Should you not place them? We have so many other videos on that. We're just going to talk about the mechanics once you've decided this is the right thing for the case. Once you've decided this is the right process, how do you do it and how do I do it? So first of all, my suggestion, honestly, unless you're an orthodontist or unless you have a lot of experience like bending and adapting wires, is to have it custom, custom made. And I like the ones that have um, pads on each tooth. So, and see the pads here are actually a little bit um, mesh. They have some retention. So you can have these custom made, just send a scan or impression um, by any orthodontic lab out there. And of course there's ones that only have pads on the ends. There's ones that have pads on each of them, that ones that have a composite pad and a white button. There's so many different ones. This is just a really cheap standard one. But the main thing you've got to do is you've got to make sure that you've got the right size, okay? Which is why you have to send in the impression and you need to make sure it's super passive on the teeth, okay? And once you get it fit, and this is not, by the way, I'm not saying I had this custom made because I didn't, because this is just a type it on, I'm not gonna pay for that. But you have to make sure it's custom when, and it's actually flush. So you can see here that this is not totally flush. There's still a little gap, so I have to kind of adapt it a little bit. So and make sure I've got it nice and passive. Okay, so I might play with this for a few more minutes, but for the most part, I'm not gonna work on the passiveness of this. I'm gonna show you guys the mechanics of bonding it. So if you don't have it passive, it will move teeth. It's gonna work just like um, braces would. And you can tell clearly this is not done. So here's what I need for my armamentarium. I need five floss threaders, five pieces of floss to get started. So what I go ahead and do is I run the floss and I actually leave the wire on like I did here until I'm done with this. So I'm gonna go ahead and run my five floss threaders through this way, two. And you know, I like to pre-string them. These are things that if you have downtime in your practice, your team can go ahead and pre-string floss. It's always useful to have this stuff ready to go. So three, four. And you can do this on top teeth too, but it really is gonna depend on the bite. Because sometimes if the bite isn't fully opened, then they're going to break it off. Um, I like to use these in phase one cases as like a temporary one. And I don't always do custom for that. It's just going to be, you know, whatever works. But basically, all right, let's go ahead and begin. So you're going to go ahead and put this on here. All right. And the floss is going to hold it in. You can do like that, okay? You can see that? And just kind of loop it over, over the contact. It's a lot of floss and a lot of wires and all different ways to do this. Got a lot going on here. Let's do this one first. This is like lots of ropes. And last but not least, this one. And now you don't have to worry about holding it down. Now, I didn't say this was fully adapted, so <laughs> I'm just kind of showing you the process because this is not fully adapted, nor is it done. But you get the idea. If it was adapted, if you had a custom one made, it should be fully adapted. Then I go ahead and I use my, my bond. Express a big blob. Remember, this is going to set fast. So, And I'm going to go ahead and take a little bit and go ahead and press it on. And you can even, you can kind of stack it as you go, you know? Or you can put it straight on if you want to, like this. Okay, and then dip a little bit of primer. You know, make sure you, you don't want to get it in the um, embrasures, of course. You can dip a little bit of primer to help to mold it. and just adapt that button all over, all over, but not getting in the embrasures, of course. Yeah, this is where you want it to look real nice. And so on. Just do all five of them 
Of course, if you're going to make it higher than that, you're probably going to want to light cure it before you stack it. But that's pretty much all you do. You're going to go ahead and do all the six uh, pads. Of course, it's going to be better adapted than that. Light cure it, and you can go ahead and pull the floss out, and it should be ready to go. If your bite is all settled in the back and you have contact in every single tooth, balance and equal, then you can go ahead and make an Essex to go over it. If you don't, then I usually like to let this sit. Have the patient come back at three to four week intervals and double check um, how the bite is settled in the back and then go ahead, ahead and make the Essex at that time. All right. Thanks so much for watching. Hopefully this was helpful. Continue to send your questions um, my way at straightsmilesolutions.com. And if you ever need help with a case, go ahead and buzz us. Thank you.